everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to Queen Amadai TV presents More Than Meets the Third Eye. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified as time the Queen Goddess goes live. All right, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Queen Amadai Shakur. You can also follow the Queen Amadai Shakur fan page and follow me on Twitter at TheGoddess27. Hello, favorable child, Naima. Terry Hinton, woke when it's black. Okay, Dragon Lily, Meta Simplica, Charlotte, Howard, Silent D is in the house. Okay. I see you, Yay Food, Lady D, Vince I am from UK, Asha Mwamba, Jasmine, Aaron. Okay, Earl, I see you, beloved. Let's get into it. Melanated Brown, Michael M. So shout out to everyone in the chat. I see you, Aeon. Shout out to everyone in the chat and everyone tuned into the Queen. Okay, so you all let me know if you start hearing any static or audio issues, okay? Make sure you put something in the chat in all caps if I can see it. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about Soul Tide. Uh, hey, Carl, Odd Negro's official of Abiola. Okay, so listen. Um, at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people don't take, this is really working my nerves on these earphones. Okay, so listen, a lot of us um, don't take heed to signs we see in relationships. Okay, thank you, Silent D, beloved. We don't take heed to things we uh, have going on in relationships. Lots of red flags, you know, lies being told, um, different excuses for things and, and stuff like that. And even some people in relationships where they're physically, verbally, and mentally abused, especially battered women, and then you see the mistreatment of these people, and then you start to wonder, why are they still there? Why don't they just leave? And then you see other cases where there could be someone so obsessed and, you know, uh, so possessive over someone, right? And to the point that it often tends to lead to violence. And then the person goes and files a restraining order, but this crazy person keeps coming back. Won't leave them alone, completely ignores all of the restraining orders, you know, won't listen to anything. This person seems to be irrational. And you say, why don't you just move on with your life? It's clear they don't want you. So bye, pack your bags and leave. Well, the reason they often don't leave is because of soul time. You see, they have formed some type of, codependent connection to the person, okay? And now, unlike soulmate, a soul tie is usually nefarious, where a soulmate is good. And in lifetime, in our lifetime, you will only have one soulmate, but you can create numerous soul ties, and most of them will likely be nefarious because here's the thing. With these soul ties that people engage in or that they get, you know, uh, have attached to them, this usually comes about from people who are having intercourse without having any type of meaning behind it, like emotional, you know, spiritual connection. They don't usually have any of that. You know, it's just like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Some of y'all call it uh, friends with benefits. Some of you are messing around with married people and married people, some of you are messing around with single people. So with that all been said, all of this fornicating and doing all these things, this is all not of God. This is all what we're taught not to do, right? And so nothing good comes from it usually. I mean, sometimes something good comes. You may have children during your union or whatever. But what I'm saying is, as far as your spirit is concerned, uh, usually nothing good comes from it. And especially when you're sleeping around with numerous different people, picking up all of their energy. And some of these people have malevolent spirits attached to them. Uh, some of these people have generational curses attached to them. And you can absolutely take on someone else's generational curse. Because once you form that bond with them, there it is. Now the demons and malevolent spirits have all the right, because you've literally just signed the contract, okay? And that's what many people don't realize. And at the end of the day, let me tell you something. If you know someone who was like, you know, a quiet, well-mannered person, who was always helpful, who always had positive, a positive attitude, then all of a sudden you see them acting crazy, just talking all loud, person, going off on people for no good reason, just being hateful and nefarious. Sometimes they have these demonic entities attached to them, that they picked up from other people who they were intimate with, okay? Pay attention. That's absolutely, because when you think about it, you know, if you're out here fornicating and just messing around with all these people, out here committing adultery, sleeping around with numerous people, talking about you're going to leave your wife, you know, your wife, some of y'all men, are talking about you're going to leave your husband, some of you all women, well, it's already a, a, a foundation of lies being built. You're lying to your spouse. And you're lying to the person you're with because nine times out of ten, you are not going to leave your spouse, honey, because it's convenient for you. And also your spouse sometimes spouses sometimes know what you're doing 
and they just put up with it and won't say anything. So that's just comfortable to some people. So they continue to go out here and still mess around with all these different people, picking up all these different energies. Some of these people may be spiritual and they may be, you know, uh, a high vibration. Some of these people may be low vibration. They may have a history of nefariousness. You don't know what you're going to get. And so when you're spreading yourself around, sleep with all these different people, you're actually spreading yourself thin. And you really don't care too much about your spiritual self, nor your physical self, because there's all types of diseases, anything you can get. And you can say, well, oh, we use protection. Well, what does that have to do with HPV and herpes? Because last I researched, uh, you can get those, whether you use a condom or not. And then if you have somebody at home, a spouse at home, you can bring something back to them. That negative energy that you're picking up from that person you're fooling around with, you can also take that home to them. So now what used to be a peaceful, happy, healthy arrangement or marriage can totally turn toxic. And then you know what some people think, let me just tell you how slick it is. Because here's the thing, if you're married, and I'm not just going in on married people, I'm talking about anyone who's just sleeping around, period. But I'm using married people for an example in this scenario. So let's just say that you're married, right? And your spouse, you know, your spouse and you have been getting along and everything's all fine. And then for whatever reason, one of the parties goes out, sleeps around with someone else, and then they come home with that negative energy on them, that bond that they've created, bond, right? They have a bond. They've been bound by this person's negativity and spirit, okay? Like spellbound. Now, so you go home with this negative energy that you just got from this person you slept with outside of the home. Then you go home and days later you sleep with your spouse. But now that energy is transferred to them because remember, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It's merely transformed and transferred from one thing to another. So it's absolutely contagious. But here's the thing. When these people start arguing and bickering and acting all crazy, right, and just get into domestic disputes and everything, and then when their friends and family start to find out, they're asking themselves, how did they get here? They were just all in love last year. They were having the times of their lives. And then when they find out what's been going on, that one of the parties has been cheating, well, then they'll likely only think that that's the reason they're always arguing and fussing and fighting because this person found out this one was cheating. Sometimes that is the case, but more often than not, the reason they're continuing to fight and argue is because of those negative de uh, deities or beings, those entities that have been attached to them. Okay, and remember, I told you before that demons, they just can't start harassing you or oppressing you or trying to influence you. They have to have a contract to do so. So when you're going out here fornicating, committing adultery and all these other things, whatever nefariousness of watching porn, people addicted to porn, and all of those type of things, when you're doing those type of things, contributing to uh, or using illicit drugs, you know, overdoing it with alcohol, abusing alcohol, when you're doing all of those things, you attract the attention of demons. And you see, then you've given them the okay to go ahead and harass you because they know, demons know that when you're high off of drugs, when your, your uh, mind is impaired due to you being inebriated, they know that you're not in your right state of mind. So now I've been waiting for this is what they think. And then they can just come on and hop in and just start taking over. Okay. And like I said, these things are easily transferred. And so it's just also crazy. Now, you know, some people say or some people think that when you have these soul ties, you know, that you can only get it with certain people that you sleep with. And they say that, you know, sometimes it's positive. Let me tell you why it's never positive. That's just not true. You know, even a couple of experts have said that it's positive when you get soul ties. That's not positive. How is that ever positive? Because here's the thing. If you have a soul tie with someone, right? That means you're bound to them, a spiritual bond that you've created. Now, that doesn't mean it's good because this person could have many, many demons, like I told you. They could have generational curses or anything, just a bad attitude in general. They could be a whole satanic worshiper, just worshiper, just doing any type of thing. So that's not necessarily going to mean that it's good because you have a spiritual bond with this person. Because what type of spiritual bond? The spiritual bond from the most high or the spiritual bond that comes from Satan, the most low? I'm just wondering, okay? And so with that all being said, uh, Curly Girl said, Queen, I knew my ex was cheating. I had dreams I was fighting a powerful snake. So I told God that I can't fight the snake. 
and that snake was a woman who he got pregnant. Oh, honey, that's also sad and nefarious. And see how he got the woman pregnant, which clearly says he wasn't user protected. So therefore, he didn't care about his own safety, health, and well-being, nor yours, right? And neither the other woman's. And at the end of the day, we never know. When somebody's out here lying and cheating, honey, they could be sleeping with numerous of people. You might just catch them with one. Because like I always tell you, when people get caught in their BS, what do I always tell you? This ain't their first time at the rodeo, more likely than not, right? So when somebody's cheating, they've likely already been doing it. You just didn't catch them before because you weren't paying as much attention. But then when you start noticing a pattern of different things seeming shady and slick, that's when you start looking and conducting your investigations. That's when and why you caught them. And as some of us have intuitiveness and we just feel in our spirit that something's not right. So then you start conducting an investigation. And that goes for males and females. But at the end of the day, honey, it's just all so nefarious. And let me tell you, to be bound or bonded to someone, you know, is unnatural. That's not what you were sent here to do, to be tied to people because you're going around fornicating with them. But see, here's the thing. You see, the trick of the devil is to, you know, we, we know how some people are so, you know, caught up in intimacy, right? Y'all know what I'm, what I'm talking about. I'm not going to say that word because the algorithm. But some people are caught up with SEX. They're caught up with that. So with that all being said, at the end of the day, you know, when they start doing all of this stuff, out here just laying around everywhere or whatever and not even having any concern for themselves, they don't realize how much they're lowering their frequency, how they're taking on a whole nother set of problems because you already have your own problems. We all do. But see, when you take on another person's energy and spirit and their soul ties and all of that, now their problems become yours. Because it's the same energy, just, you know, in a different person, basically. Okay? So anyway, let me go to the chat. Dragon Lily says, I was happy I untied my ex-husband. My daughter was just a good thing, uh, only good thing that came out of that bond. Absolutely. And here's the thing. When the, some people try to say that it's a good thing to have soul ties, first of all, what part of being tied to someone else, right? What part of feeling that you can't depend or that you can't exist without another person? Because a lot of these people, that's why some people become obsessed with people. Like I said, some people become so obsessed with the person. They don't want the person out of their sight. They don't want them going anywhere with anyone else, not even people they know or just their friends. They start trying to cut the people off of, from families. A lot of people do these things. These are all the results of soul ties. And some people say, oh, they just love them so much. They're just so in love. No, that's not love. That is a need for power and control. And you know who has a need for power and control? I'm so glad you asked. Satan and his minions. And you see, Satan and his minions know that people love SEX. And so that's a good way for them to come in and take over and control and influence you to do things that you normally wouldn't do. You ever read stories, and I'm sure you do, right? I read and uh, report on some of them. You ever read stories where somebody just totally loses it and kills the person that everyone thought they loved? And then when you find out why they did, you're like, that makes no sense. Why would you kill somebody over that? That's because they're not in the right frame of mind sometimes. They have soul ties. They have been taken over by malevolent beings. And these beings are dictating their moves and actions and thoughts, right? Influencing them to do all sorts of nefarious things and to, in fact, wreak havoc. That's what they do. Remember the story I told you all about just a few days ago on the other channel? The uh, man who once won $10 million in a lottery, right? And then he was like 52 and he killed his 23 year old girlfriend. And then I was like, why would he do that? I mean, just get someone else. This woman doesn't want you just leave. But he went through her phone apparently while she was asleep because he murdered her in her sleep. So he likely went through her phone then, but he saw text messages in the phone that led him to know that she was texting another man. So he killed her for that. That is a soul tie that he had with her. You know, when you all say, some of y'all like to say stuff like, oh, she got him whipped, right? She got him whipped. Isn't that what Donald Trump, in fact, said about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? He said that Prince Harry was whipped by Meghan. That's basically the same thing. That's what it is. It's just another way of saying a soul tie, right? That person is so obsessed. They just want to stay around you all the time. Now, here's the thing. There's some people that will be obsessed with you and start acting all crazy and being possessive and controlling, and that's really dangerous. That's why soul ties in general are dangerous. But also, there are some people that may have a soul tie to you, 
but you don't have one with them. You don't have one with them. And because here's the thing, when you are in, in an intimate relationship with someone, right? Now, women are more emotional than men. So women, you know, many women, I'm not going to say all, but there are some women who they have to have an emotional attachment to a man to be intimate with him. And there are some men who do feel the same, but there's very few of them trust. But these people who go out here and just throwing it around every, everywhere, you know, just going around doing whoever and whenever, well, they're picking up all these energies. And this is also nefarious, as I said, but at the end of the day, sometimes there's people who pick up the energy of another person and then they start having some of the same thoughts as this person. You know, and you're like, oh, you just read my mind. You were thinking what I'm thinking. And you think that's something good spiritually, right? That's spiritually good. Oh, we're soulmates. Sometimes they're not your soulmate, beloved. It's just a soul tie. And the devil is using that soul tie to trick you into staying in a toxic relationship. Nine times out of 10, when you have a soul tie with someone, it is toxic. Because see, here's the thing. Some of these people start feeling codependent. That's why some people commit suicide. Or they do something vindictive to the other person. Like there was a story a few years ago where a man killed his three-year-old daughter who he was keeping for the weekend because the mother had divorced him. So he killed the three-year-old daughter and then killed himself. But before he did, he left a note that said, do not try to resuscitate us. He wants to make sure they were both dead. He couldn't be safe. And he did this to hurt his ex-wife. He was so angry. He likely had a soul tied to her and she didn't have one to him. And if she did have one to him, she must have broken it. Because you can absolutely break these spells and curses because that's what they are. Some people purposely put soul ties on people. I'll give you a good example. Pimp. Pimp. Now, I'm sure they don't call it soul ties when they're doing it, but there are some people who absolutely go out here and they're intimate with people for the sole reason of gaining control of their minds and of manipulating them. These con people who go out here, like, for example, the guy who was online, he was conning all these women, and he met all these women on dating apps and was going to each of them to visit them and all that stuff. They were paying to fly him out, giving him all their money. He was lying about doing investments and all that stuff. And then he ran out, ran off with all of their cash. And you can say, how can people be so stupid? Did they know he was just tricking them? He didn't really want them? No, they didn't know, beloved. They didn't know because they were blinded by the devil's trick. They had developed soul ties with this fool. And like I said, soul ties isn't always what you get when you're in a relationship with someone that's nefarious or any type of a serious relationship or side chick, or whatever side dude. It's not always those cases. It could be someone that you went and met at a bar and you went to a hotel and just laid up with them. And that's how it usually starts. You go in there and sleep with all these different people, not knowing what you're bringing back. And I'm not even talking about only disease, okay? Not knowing what you're bringing back. And it's just all so crazy. And then here's the thing. There are some people who have been, you know, sexually assaulted and they don't want to tell on these people. They will cover for the person. They will laugh at the person. Even women's who are victim, uh, women who are victims of domestic dis, uh, abuse, some of them will lie. Oh, he didn't hit me. He didn't do anything. Leave him alone. When the police come, after neighbors have called them or whatever, and they do that, and you say, why would you stay there? He's beating the crap out of you. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. These people have developed not only soul ties, but emotional ties to the person who's the very devil in their life the very person that's abusing and mistreating them. And they just can't leave. Every time they try, they want to leave. They know they should leave, but they just can't. Something is holding them there. It's like someone put a stake in the ground, tied a rope to it, and then tied the other, the other piece of the rope around their neck. That's what it seems like. And so they can only go but so far. They can't ever completely just get away. So I said all that to say, please be careful with whom you sleep, right? Wokwa says, my soul ties was my ex, with my ex-wife. Uh, key word being ex. But we're good friends now, minus the drama. Okay, well, that's good to hear. And so another thing is, hold on. Okay, so here's, no, here's another thing, too. Some of these people, and I want you to pay attention. If you know, and I know you all have heard this, how some people as children, they're molested. And when they get older, 
they become sexually attracted to whatever their the uh, person who assaulted them is attracted to. Let's just say a man molests a little boy, and then that little boy grows up to be gay. Now those things do happen, vice versa with women as well. So when things like that happen, I mean, look at R. Kelly. He was molested at the age of six by his own sister, right? And then what did he do? He became a pedophile. He started going around messing with little boys and stuff. I mean, little girls, right? So with that all being said, that's likely a soul tie. You see, people will say things like, oh, they put a, a spirit on them. They put a spirit of perversion on them. That's why they did that. That's why they went out and molested, because they were molested. That is what happened. That is absolutely what happened. They put a spirit on them through soul tie. A soul tie is nothing more than the devil's contract because the most high will send you a soul mate. That is someone who's like your twin flame. That is someone who, when you meet them, you first of all feel familiar with them, like you've known them before, or met them somewhere before, and you probably did in another lifetime, right? But you feel a connection to them instantly. You may find yourself ending their sentences. You may find that you both have the same thought, the same ideology. You may just randomly say the same things at the same time or whatever. That's a soul mate. A mate is a match, someone who is a match for you, who walks beside you, right? But a soul tie, and that's a bonded. Okay, and the Most High doesn't want us to be in bondage. That's what the devil does. Soul ties create a bond, which is a bondage. So now you're stuck with some of, sometimes stuck with this person that you don't even want to deal with. That's why I say some of these victims who are abused and you know assaulted and all of those things. That's why they develop Stockholm syndrome because they just can't shake it. They just can't leave this person alone, no matter how hard they try. And that's what it is. It's always nefarious. It's never anything good with the soul tie. The more of these people that you go around and sleep and give your energy to, because you're giving them your energy. You're just going around here, laying up with all these people, just giving them your energy. Don't you feel drained and depleted after you're done? I'm sure you do. But at the end of the day, as well as you're giving them your energy, you're absorbing theirs and just making all of this, you know, uh, all of this negativity. Right? Because if you're doing this with negative people, and I can guarantee you that the soul ties that most people create are absolutely coming from negative people. You know how I know? I'm so glad you asked. The reason I know is because most people who go out here and who have one night stand, sleep intimately with people they don't even know from a can of paint, sometimes don't even know their last name, sometimes don't even know their real first name. Right? People who go out there and do stuff like that. They're not high vibrational. So you already know they're low vibrational, right? So what kind of energy do they have? Low energy, right? Because low energy people do those things. Some of y'all might say, that don't have anything to do with our energy. I'm high vibrational and I sleep with lots of people. Honey, if you're sleeping with lots of people and you really don't have any regard for yourself or your respect for yourself, that goes for men too. And you really just don't care about, you know, diseases and stuff you can catch. Yet you really are low vibrational. High vibrational positive people, people who have knowledge of self and of the world and who are intellectuals, they usually don't engage in such foolishness because they know better. I'm just saying. They know better. Now, I'm not saying they're perfect. They're not going to go out here and cheat. Oh, yeah, some of them will, right? But at the end of the day, people that just go out here and they have like a whole long body count to the point that they're ashamed to admit how many people they've in fact slept with. Those are the people, yes, warrior says are just nasty, absolutely. And their souls are just nasty too. And low vibrational, because now they have all these different negative energies. And, entities. and I'm telling you, these energies and entities they're picking up are nine times out of 10 negative, like I said. Because positive people who care about themselves and their own health, and they want to raise their vibration, they know you are never going to do it doing that. What did I tell you all about raising into your guide like self, Kundalini energy? You can only do that when you abstain from sex for so long. 
So now you're just going around here just landing everywhere, honey. Please trust me and believe. You are not in your God like hell. And you never will be as long as you do those things. Okay? That's just not how it's going to be. Okay? So Judah Queen said, I was taught to wait until marriage. Honey, weren't we all taught to wait until marriage? But clearly most people did. Clearly. Melanie Brown says, no lies detect the facts. Thank you, beloved. But clearly, honey, some of us absolutely were taught, or most of us were taught to wait until we get married. But honey, who does that these days? Most people don't. Most people don't. And, and then here's the thing. Even if you're not married, you still should not be going out here just doing all of this with all these different people. If you care about your health, and I mean when I say your health, I mean your mental health, your physical health, as well as your spiritual health. Okay? Because the soul ties go straight to the soul. Right? They intertwine, interlink, and latch on to your very soul. So now all the dirt that they've done and are doing becomes dirt that you're, you've done and are doing. And y'all sitting up here just think it's all peaches and cream, honey. Clearly it's not. Clearly it is not. Now listen to this. Like stuff, everyone, please like and share. Let me pull up this article real quick. Now, there's some ways. Hold on just a second. Okay, here we go. Get rid of these pop ups. Now, listen to this. If you found someone who makes you feel so intertwined and connected to them, you may have developed a soul tie. Soul tie is sometimes referred, are referred to as an emotional or spiritual courting. It is an inexplicable, powerful emotional bond to another person. Now, that sounds good, right? It is an explicable, inexplicable, powerful emotional bond to another person. That sounds good. I have a powerful emotional bond to this person. Let me tell you something. At the end of the day, like I told you, a soul tie is never good. A bond and a bondage, same thing. Now pay attention because here's the thing. Remember the lady, that corrections officer, Vicki White, who helped Casey White escape from prison and then they went on the lamb? She likely had a soul tie with him. She likely had a soul tie with him because remember, they said she was visiting him two years before he was ever uh, he ever escaped. Now, I and mean, we were all like, why is she so crazy that she threw away all that she had worked for, her home, her job, to go on the run with the school only to get caught? And then she kills herself? That was a soul tie. So you see how foolish things, those foolish things that people do when they're engaged in these things? Another thing is this. These people who go out here and sleep around and then they come home to their spouse, and then the spouse starts asking questions because they notice that some doesn't seem right or whatever. And then they get into these heated arguments and all of that. That's not only the person arguing because they want to defend themselves and because they clearly don't want to get exposed. You see, liars hate the truth. So when you start accusing a liar, I want y'all to pay attention. No one puts up a bigger argument than a person who is lying and you're sitting there calling them out on their lie. When you start accusing a liar of lies, they start talking so loud, trying to talk over you. They don't want to hear what you have to say because they know it's the truth. Liars always hate the truth. That's just a fact. They cannot stand the truth and they don't want to hear it. But when these people are out here, you know, uh, doing all this dirt and then they come home and the spouse is angry and the argument ensues, what the spouse doesn't realize is you're not just dealing with this person. You're now dealing with all the other people that they've slept with. And some of these people are wicked, right, and evil. So when somebody gets mad and goes and picks up a gun or a knife and does something crazy, I'm telling you, a lot of times it's the energy that they got from someone else. Why so many people end up in divorces? Because they go pick up this outside energy and bring it on home. And the other partner's like, who is this person? Have you ever been in a relationship? Think about it. 
Have you ever been in a relationship with someone and then all of a sudden you feel like you don't even know them anymore? Like, who is this person sitting in front of me? They never used to act like this. Likely because they've gone out and gotten some more souls attached to them that are clearly nefarious. And so they're now acting out what those, uh, what the other person would normally do in a confrontational situation. And so it's just, it's just, you know, I could go on and on, but it's really so crazy that in this day and age, people don't think enough of themselves to be selective, to have standards when going out here, finding people to be intimate with and to give their energy and time and to share their spirit and to mix souls with. They don't even think about it. If somebody looks good, somebody looks like they got some money, it's on. That's how some of y'all are literally think. Y'all know it. That's how some of you literally think. Let me tell you something, honey. Before you go jumping in bed with somebody, I suggest you try to find out what kind of person they are first. Ask them a few questions. And I'm not talking about, oh, what kind of job? Where do you work? What kind of car you drive? Because that's what, that's what people do when they're concerned about money. But if you're concerned about your spiritual health and well-being and your mental and physical, then you should be asking other questions, you know? How many people have you slept with in the last six months? And they say, uh, ma'am, I'm married. Yeah, I know. So again, how many people have you slept with in the last six months? Uh, okay, please. I'm just curious. Ask questions. All right? And then stop foolishly thinking that whatever somebody did in the last relationship, they won't necessarily do it to you. Honey, if somebody was cheating on their spouse with you, one of these days, if and when you marry them, they're going to do the same thing. I don't know how people don't understand that. Some people will be like, oh, I thought, I can't believe he did this. He had a whole wife when you got with him. Why would you think he wouldn't do it? Isn't that foolish how some people think they're the exception to the rule? And really, they're not. Okay? They're just another pawn in the game. Maestro Dan says, Queen, do you think soul ties are exclusively sexual or can it be platonic? Also, can you have more than one soulmate? Uh, thank you for your question, beloved, and your insight into the topic and your contribution. Peace, love, and blessings to you. I'm going to say this. Here's my thought. Um, you only have one soulmate. And a soulmate and a soul tie, they're not the same thing. And yes, soulmate, you only have one. Okay? And sometimes we meet our, our soulmates in life. And we don't realize at the time they're our soulmates until they've walked out of our lives. And then we can't stop thinking about them. We miss them. We remember all the good things they did. And, you know, if it's your soulmate, sometimes they'll come back to you. But as far as the, uh, hold on, let me go back to your question. Are soul ties exclusively sexual? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, some people will say they are not, but I beg to differ. I absolutely beg to differ because soul ties are created through a physical bond, connection, right? I mean, not a bond, but they're created through a physical act. And that act is sex. You're, when you are intimate with someone, just think about it. You're mixing spirit. You ever think about that? When you're intimate, you're becoming one with that person. It's like you're merging together. And that's how these ties are created. It's like your spirits, your souls are now linked together. And then when you go and sleep with the next person, they're linked together. And then the next person, all the people they slept with is linked together. You know how many energies and demons that can actually be from just you sleeping with, oh, let's say five people throughout your life? Now, imagine if you sleep with 50 people throughout your life. Some of y'all already passed that probably, but I don't know. But what if you slept with 100 people in life? Do y'all remember Magic Johnson once was reported to have slept with over 2,000 people? That was years ago. Over 2,000 people? Do you know how many souls that is? Not to mention all the people that those 2,000 people slept with? All oh, so crazy, honey. Welcome says, can parents be a soul tie? Uh, thank you, beloved, for your insight into the topic and contribution. Peace, love, and blessings to you. No, woke one. Parents cannot be a soul tie. You can have a spiritual bond with your parents. Right? Because you came from them. But no, a soul tie is reserved for people who are out here mixing spirits and energies with other people, just out here sleeping around. That's how you develop soul ties. And they're always, like I said, nefarious. It's not good because anything that bonds you, you know, that holds you in bondage, because I want you to really think about this. So the woman who's been abused 
she's either in a bad marriage or she has a boyfriend who's abusive. I'm just giving a scenario. And then, like I said, she can't leave. She wants to leave. Sometimes she even calls the cop. He gets arrested, but then she goes to bail him out. She's granted a restraining order, but then she goes back and begs them to drop it or dismiss it or whatever. Soul ties. That's what it is. Okay? Soul ties make you do crazy things and, and just feel like you can't live without that person. Right? Now, this is in some cases. And this is why some people become obsessed and possessive, like I said. But in other cases with soul ties, you may not feel like you're connected to them at all. You may not want anything to do with them. And that's usually the case for people who have one night stands or go out and have these little flings, you know, you know, or they may have a spouse or a person at home that they're dealing with. They go out and mess around and all that stuff. They don't have like a bond to that person that these people like, oh, I want to be with you every day. No, there's different kinds of soul ties. In this case, it will likely be someone just picking up this energy from a person they don't even know. Right. They found out nothing about these different people they've been interacting and sleeping with. And so now they have all of that built up in them. And then the person that they're living with starts to think, why is he so bipolar? He has so many different personalities and aspects. No, he doesn't have different personalities. He has different types of energy that he has con collected and harvested from all these people he's been out there dealing with. And women, too. Same thing. And they don't even have the presence of mind, the ones who these things happen to, they don't even have the presence of mind to realize why they are acting strange all of a sudden. And just doing all this foolishness. Uh, goodness, Ray, both said both men and women for Magic Johnson. I don't know about that, beloved. I have no idea, honey. Venus says, facts, queen. Thank you, beloved. And so anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Listen, I want to thank you all for tuning back in, but pay attention to who you are sleeping with. And remember that a soulmate is a good thing. If you find a soulmate, that's somebody that you would likely consider marrying, somebody who's going to be there for you and have your back. You automatically feel familiar with them as if you've known them before. You find each other completing each other's sentences, thinking the same thoughts and all of that. That's a soulmate. A soul tie. Well, that's when you come home and you just are acting out of character, just being crazy and putting nefarious. Your partner's wondering, what the hell's happening to you? What are you doing? What is going on? Why are you acting so strange? And saying things that you normally wouldn't even say. Spirits from other people. That's what it is. Desmond says, thank you, Queen, for this. It's helping me to uh, helping me now as we speak. Oh, well, I'm glad it's helping you, beloved. Thank you for your kind words of contribution. Peace, love, and blessings to you. Um, Melody Brown says, I know that uh, with each passing day, his actions that I'm with my Leo Alpha soulmate finally now, and we can we have been together four years, and he can't be duplicated, and I wouldn't try it. Okay? Absolutely. So if you have a good person in your life, honey, I would advise you to treat them kindly, you know, or whatever. Don't be out here just sleeping around with all these different people, collecting it. And let me just tell you something. You know how a lot of people are so shallow. They go out here and they pick out people that they want to sleep around with or whatever or date or whatever based off of their looks solely because of their attractiveness, or their physique and all that stuff. Y'all better start paying attention to that person's spirit, to what that person has on their mind. So what type of things they're saying? What do they believe in? What do they disagree with? These are all questions you should be trying to find out instead of just worrying about look, because someone can be beautiful on the inside, on the outside, and they can look like a whole demon, okay, on the inside. Please. I mean, look at Kim Kardashian and her family, right? They paid to look good, right? But at the same time, look at all the men that they deal with. And what happens to them after the fact? Clearly acts like witches to me. I'm just saying. And so, yeah, Venus is very shallow. Absolutely. Okay. Our Negro's official says, my body count is three, uh, two of which were long-term relationships. Okay, beloved. Mike Elf said, Terry Hinn says, thank you, Queen, for this spiritual channel. You're welcome, beloved. Thank you for your kind words and your donation. Peace, love, and blessings to you. Oh, don't let me go back and see Mike's comment. Mike says, sex is soul exchange. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Now, y'all heard that? That's absolutely what it is. Sex is a soul exchange. That's why when you develop these soul ties, it's only through being intimate, okay, and, and having sex with someone. You are creating that bond. And like I said, these ties come from the devil himself because the devil knows, you know, that 
pleasuring oneself is something that many people have a habit of doing far too much. And so that opportunity is used to have all of these malevolent beings attach themselves to you. And the more of these beings attach themselves to you, the more you're going to be out here and be, become even more promiscuous. Nine times out of 10, that's just the way it is. You become even more promiscuous. That's why sometimes children who have been molested, girls or boys, when they get older and become teenagers, they absolutely become promiscuous. Now, I'm not saying all of them, but there are some of them that absolutely become promiscuous because now they have mixed souls with a whole demon. And now that's how they're carrying themselves out. And demons make you think or, you know, think in low vibrations because they are low vibrations. So you're out here, you just be doing any type of thing, right? When you start sleeping around with all these different people. So protect your energy and be careful who you give your energy to and who you lay with because, hey, that old saying, if you lie down with dogs, you wake up with fleas. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Okay, that is absolutely true. All right, so with that all being said, everyone please like and share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time between Goddess goes live. All right, I hope to see you all in the next chat on the original Queen Amadai Shakur show um, for your daily vitamins later. With that all being said, I wish you all love, peace, and prosperity. Each one, teach one. Do something productive and constructive. That's what we need to do. And also, Make sure that you're doing your daily affirmation when you rise in the morning and when you lie down at night. Make sure you're speaking positive, positivity into your life and into the lives of those you love and care about. And don't feel bad about saying something nice to just some random person on the street. All right? Spread love, not hate. But at the end of the day, do what's best for you in all aspects of your life. If you're in a relationship with someone, you feel like they're sleeping around. They're not giving you the same energy you're giving them. They're not showing you any type of thoughtfulness, consideration. Everything has to be all about them. You know, you need to just leave. Sometimes we have to just walk out of the relationship and don't look back. You don't even have to close the door. Just walk out and leave. But some of you won't leave because of those soul ties. You feel stuck in a rut. Like your feet are literally in dry concrete. You just can't do it. And that's because you have a soul tie with this person. And very often, the people that have you uh, bound, they absolutely know what they're doing. They've cast a spell on you, beloved. So with that all been said, uh, make sure you're doing your due diligence also, right? Not only saying your positive affirmation, but being careful of the words you speak and trying to stay away from negative people who are energy vampires and who only serve to try to bring you down. Negative people will never, in fact, try to lift you up. They couldn't lift you up if they wanted to. Because they just have such low vibrational energy. So with that all being said, everyone enjoy the rest of this lovely day. And I will talk to you all again soon.